evening, Holy Family. My name is Irina Mesa, and I'm here on behalf of Mission Haiti. As part of our Haiti weekend, we have a film to show you, but this year it's not about the delegation visit to Haiti. We decided to do something different to showcase the hard work of Hands Together and to let you know what Hands Together is. So we decided to produce this film to make others aware of the hard work of Hands Together. This film is one more contribution from Holy Family to the overall mission of Hands Together. As part of this film to showcase the hard work of Hands Together, we'd like to thank you for your contributions to Haiti and to continue to help the people of Haiti in our mission to help the poor and to listen the to the plight of the poor, the cry of the poor. So we would like to thank you again for all your support and tell you that we accept cash, checks, credit cards, volunteers, prayers, and to continue giving all the support that you've been giving to Haiti. And we thank you and may God bless you. Enjoy the film. Hi everyone, I'm Colleen Williams. As a journalist, a mother, a human being, I would like to introduce you to Father Tom Hagen. Father Tom is an oblate priest who has been doing missionary work in Haiti for the past 30 years. Here is his description of Haiti as he experienced it for over three decades. Once called the Pearl of the Caribbean, Haiti occupies the western half of the island of Hispaniola just southeast of Cuba. French colonists imported African slaves and ravaged the land. Those slaves revolted in 1804 and Haiti gained independence. They were proud to have defeated Napoleon's army to gain freedom, but brutal dictators followed. Today, Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, 10 million people. Devastation by earthquakes and hurricanes, exploitation by political leaders. But despite its history, a proud and joyous people. The UN documents one slum area, Cité Soleil, near the capital Port-au-Prince, as the most violent place on earth. 300,000 people live in the slum of Cité Soleil. It is three square miles of shacks made of cardboard plastic bags, and tin. No electricity, no running water, no toilets. Cité Soleil is a garbage dump where the poor have been forced to live. Trash everywhere. Disease rampant. 90% unemployment. Local gangs rule territories. Murder and violence are the norm and hunger stalks Cité Soleil. There are no public schools. Rural Haiti exhibits a different kind of poverty. The beautiful mahogany forests of Haiti were cut down and shipped to France by the colonizers. As a result, the topsoil washed into the sea. Agriculture became a challenge. Young people are lured to the city and small farming communities they are left with no one to work the fields. Into this world stepped Father Tom with his associate, Doug Campbell. Father Tom founded Hands Together to help the poorest of the poor. The heart of Hands Together is the gospel proclamation that God loves each person infinitely and absolutely. Hands Together has developed extensive programs in four major areas, education, nutrition and health, agriculture, and services. Father Tom and Doug believe that education is the only escape from Cité Soleil and the poverty that is Haiti. 
They founded the Hands Together Schools, preschool through high school. Today, they serve 17,000 children. All Hands Together Schools are free. They are safe havens of hope and love from the violence of poverty. The schools offer an antidote to a gang life of violence, drugs, and crime. The girls are rescued from early pregnancy and possible prostitution. The schools offer a well-rounded education with emphasis on service and helping others. There is equal representation of girls and boys in a country where one third of the girls never ever attend school. To stem malnourishment, Hands Together provides a free, nourishing noonday meal daily to all of the children in their schools. Collaboration with Mary's Meals makes this possible. Since contaminated water is the principal cause of disease in Haiti, Hands Together has drilled over 1,000 wells throughout Haiti for potable water and agricultural development. There is no medical aid in Cité Soleil and the remote villages. So Hands Together operates a free mobile clinic that can reach these areas. The clinic is staffed by Haitian doctors and nurses and treats over 30,000 patients a year. Hands Together also operates two free health clinics, one in Cité Soleil slum and one in the Gonaives Trusabla slum. Treatment for gunshot wounds is common. Mothers with infants are the most numerous patients. Haiti is an agricultural nation, but farming techniques are turn of the century here. Hands Together has created a 144 acre model farm dedicated to improving and expanding Haiti's agricultural production. Poor farmers learn new methods and hundreds of agriculture students take a three month hands-on program. The hope here to create agents of change who will modernize Haiti agriculture. Hands Together has also fostered and funded three credit unions and agricultural cooperatives. The largest, Prodeeb, has over a thousand members. The cooperatives provide irrigation, tools, seeds, and credit. They pool crops and help the farmers market their produce. In the remote village of Basin, Hands Together has also built a retreat center which provides agricultural and environmental training for thousands of students and farmers every year. It promotes massive reforestation projects and champions recycling and composting throughout Haiti. Poverty creates special needs. Hands Together reaches out to provide a variety of services, including emergency aid, assisting in countless personal emergencies, illness, hunger, funerals, clothing, clothing the naked, gang intervention, intervening in gang warfare, elderly feeding and care, caring for and feeding the elderly. Radio Bukman, financing and staffing a grassroots radio station. And sports, installing an artificial turf soccer and community field in Cité Soleil. It is a place of joy. Leadership. Hands Together employs over 800 Haitians and develops Haitian-run programs. Father Tom's philosophy is to empower the Haitian poor. Visitors. Hands Together welcomes visitors, especially from parishes or organizations. Invariably, the visitors experience the trip of a lifetime. The visit is typically four to five days, and the visitors pay their own way. But Father Tom provides accommodations, transportation, and meals. Groups are limited in size, 10 to 12 people.
Father Tom and hands together live the gospel. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. God bless Father Tom and hands together. If you would like to reach out and help Father Tom Hagen, here's the information you need. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be in California. Boy, I love coming here. I love coming to our holy family because it is part of our family. I'm watching that film for the sixth time or seventh time this today, and uh, I'm reminded of, of being in Wakefield, Massachusetts. I was in Wakefield, Massachusetts about six weeks ago, and I was giving a mission talk like this. And after Mass, somebody came up to me and they said, hey, what's it like working with a poor down there anyway? And for some reason, there was enough grace in the moment that I actually told the truth. I didn't give some off-the-cuff answer, but I looked right at them, and the words came, and I'm not sure where they came from, but they came. And I looked at the person and I said, what's it like working with the poor? You're lied to all the time. You're stolen from. Your friends are murdered and beaten and kidnapped. You're buried alive in earthquakes. You're, you're almost drowned in, 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 in hurricanes. You spend years building something that you think is going to work, and then and you're taking all these steps forward and only to see it fall apart in front of you. It takes four steps backward for every two steps forward. You seem to be tired. Everything seems to be difficult. Everything's broken. You go to bed so tired, you crawl up the stairs and you crawl in the bed and it's hot and there's bugs all over the place and you, you go to the sound of gunfire, you go to bed to the sound of gunfire and, and you wake up and you kind of peek out the window hoping, hoping that the, the, the crowd at the gate isn't that long, but they're there. A dozen people, and then two dozen people. And by the time breakfast is there and you're, you're going over to go to Mass at, at Mother Teresa's chapel, they're, they're chasing you and following you and, and angry because you can't give everybody something. And so I said to the person, if I guess if I, I have thought about all the times I'd like to stop being a father to my teenage children because I don't like it. And I looked at the person, probably enough grace in the moment to say it, and it came up to me. And all that came out of me was a simple phrase. And I said to them, I can't. And he says, why not? He goes, I said, because I'm Catholic. I'm Catholic. I'm not here to be entertained. I'm not here to do a bunch of stuff I like. That'll come, maybe, maybe not. But I'm here because God created me and he sent me here to do something that he wants me to do. And what I'm trying to say to all of us here is, is that we're all here, not because that we're, we fell out of the sky in Pasadena and landed here, and now we can run around and entertain ourselves and run around and do whatever, but because we were sent here by God to fulfill God-given tasks. And God needs us. Whatever gifts and graces and talents were given to me, they're not meant for me. They are meant for my teenage children. They are meant for the children of Haiti. And they're meant to join with your gifts and graces to hear the cry of the poor and to help people, to be used to help others, to allow Jesus to live inside of me and flow through me. I may not like it. I may like it sometimes, too. So I'm asking you today. And in Haiti, we must protect that dignity because it's being threatened and it's being trampled upon and it's being debased. So I to bring up my friend and my mentor, Father Tom Hagen. Tom, thank you very much. God bless you. Can you hear me?
remember a few years ago, before they made the changes in the liturgy, the priest used to come out and say, the Lord be with you. And everyone would say, and with you also. And I came out one time, there was something wrong with the microphone, the people didn't know that. And I came out and it says, there's something wrong with this microphone. And everyone said, and with you also. <laughs> remember that. But anyway, it's good to be back, it truly is. And I remember 10 years ago, if not more, the very first time I came up from Haiti, I looked out at you, I felt your energy, and you energized me. And I found myself saying to each and every one of you, my fellow missionaries, more than ever, we came up from Haiti just yesterday, go back to Haiti tomorrow. But as I look out at you now, more than ever, from the bottom of my heart, I believe that each and every one of you is indeed a missionary. I believe the day you were born, Almighty God gave to you a sacred mission that's unique for you. You don't have to go off to Haiti. You don't have to go off to Latin America. The Lord is calling you right here, right now. And as I looked at that wonderful film, it was great, but I gotta be honest with you. I would be very pretentious to think that much of that film has anything to do with me. I probably contributed about 1%. The ones I really owe credit to are people like Doug Campbell, who just finished speaking to you. He was 19 years old in 1986. I took the first group of young students to Haiti. The first group that they encountered were the lepers. When I saw the lepers, I moved back. I was frightened, but not, not Doug and that other group. They came up and gave them big hugs and said, listen, we gotta do something for them. And sure enough, they would. They would eventually build a clinic for those lepers, but more than anything else, if you go there today, the, the, the whole bias towards leprosy has been shattered by a group of American young people. And so when we look at a film like that, the people that I thank God for are especially our American young people. One of the young men who accompanied Doug that, that day in Haiti that week died in the World Trade Center, Rick Thorpe. But many of our young people, if not all of them, if you're challenged, can do extraordinary things. And also, too, this is a church, our beautiful church, it's made up of laity. You know, sometimes they made too much fuss over we priests, you know. And, and, and we were, we're a powerful church, and you've got to remember that. But more than anything else, I find myself feeling a certain urgency, maybe a personal urgency, that I may not speak to you again. But what I want to say to you, more than calling you a missionary, each of you, is also I, I'm telling you, please, you got to believe you not only have a mission, but you got to have that dream. And someone once said, a mission by itself is pure drudgery. A dream by itself is pure nonsense. But a dream and a mission together is the hope of the world. My fellow missionaries, you need not have to go off to Haiti to find Haiti. There's a Haiti more proximate. It could be in your community, it could be in this parish, it could be in your home, and certainly it's in Los Angeles. There's people wanting and begging need your help. But there's a culture out there that is, that is forcing you to be pre-self-occupied and, and, and even self-absorbed. And sometimes it's hard to carry out that mission. And I beg you please to realize Almighty God needs you. And He needs you to find that proximate Haiti wherever it is in your life. There was a beautiful poem that I, one of my favorite poems by by Dom Helder Camara in Recife, Brazil. Dom Helder Camara would write this poem about, he would get up one morning and he would sit on the step of his little house and he would watch these ants pulling this huge piece of sugar cane. And he kept watching them. Finally he reached down, he picked up one of the ants, turned it up, and he watched the ants slow down and stop. And then he took the ant, put it back on the ground, and the ant walked away in a different direction. And he ended the poem by saying, it was the first time in the ant's life that it ever saw the blue sky. My fellow missionaries, only you can answer that. But you too may be so preoccupied about one, th preoccupied about one thing or another, you may lose sense of your mission and even lose sense of your dream. And certainly you may lose that sense that there's a blue sky in your life. I remember maybe, I don't know how many years I was in Haiti, but I was feeling particularly down. I was finding how can we carry out all this? And suddenly it was almost like the Lord picked me up and let me see the blue sky because two people knocked on my door. One was Monsignor Connolly, Clem Connolly. The other one was Carl. 
And they came all the way down and they said, we have a parish in South Pasadena, California. We want to help you. That day I saw the blue sky. And, 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 and that helped translate it into many, many more schools, children getting fed, and, and it's 700,000 people drinking fresh water. So my, my, what I want to say to each and every one of you is, please, realize you have a mission. And be a dreamer, especially you young people. And never give up on your Catholic faith and your mission. I worked in Nicaragua and Guatemala and Haiti and Mexico. Listen, I'm enormously proud of my church. The people could not have survived in Haiti without it. And I beg you, my fellow missionaries, when you get down a little bit, come in here and just be by yourself in the Blessed Sacrament and say, Lord, I need a hug. And you'll get that hug. And finally, if you really get down once in a while, take out a fork like I do a lot. Just an eating fork from the table. And a lot of times I'll sit in the chapel and just look at this fork. And it comes from a story I once heard of a young man. He was tremendously gifted. He excelled in school and sports, but unfortunately he was dying of cancer. And the priest came and gave him the last rites. When the priest was about to leave, the young man said, Father, please take that fork, take a fork and put it in my hand in the coffin. And the priest said, why would I do that? He said, because I remember whenever we had a big dinner at home, especially Thanksgiving, mom would look at me and say, hold on to your fork because the best is yet to come. My fellow missionaries, the devil wants you to think the best is not yet to come, but it is. Those of you out there maybe having a little trouble with your marriage, maybe some of you are having a little trouble with your teenage children, maybe you're overwhelmed by all the work or your financial problems, the best is yet to come. The same loving God that took care of us yesterday, he'll take care of us today and he'll take care of us tomorrow. And I pray that each and every one of you will be able to stand on your own two feet and see the world as it truly is. All this good, all this beautiful, all this ugly, and all its evil. And be able to say, Lord, I'm not afraid of my tomorrows because I've seen my yesterdays and I love today. And yes, Lord, the best is yet to come. From the bottom of my heart, and I'm speaking for all the people of Haiti, thank you for all that you have done here at Holy Family to, to help the poor of Haiti. God bless you, God love you, and I see we're blessed with Cambria here today. Thank you for this wonderful parish. God bless you. And the best is yet to come. Thank you.